You're listening to the Scientific Radio of the Unknown, one of the most interesting podcasts on the internet. For over a thousand generations, Sacramento, California has been home to more sightings of mysterious phenomena than anywhere else in the world. Now, a hardcore team of elite paranormal investigators is out to solve these mysteries using advanced scientific research methods. Nothing will stand in their way to find the truth. They are the scientific researchers of the unknown. Coming to you live from Sacramento, California. He's the founder and president of the Scientific Researchers of the Unknown. He's your host, Carson French. All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Scientific Radio of the Unknown. I'm your host, Carson French, and today I have three very special guests with me. I have Ray Labrador, Justin Hi. Clark, and Kara Kittrick, who is a real-life vampire. <laughs> Hello. Uh, thanks for having me on. Oh, yeah, we're... We're very happy to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for uh, coming. Mm-hmm. Yeah, thanks for coming on this. <laughs> All right, so uh, do you mind if we ask you a few questions? No, please, please go ahead. That's what I'm here for. All right, so uh, what is it like being a vampire? Um, shockingly ordinary, I guess. I mean, literally, I, I just drink a few milliliters of blood, like, every month, and that's that's kind of the extent of it. I mean, that's not anywhere near enough, but, like, it's enough to keep me, you know, safe and sane and all that kind of thing. So, uh, the rest of my life is just, you know, like everyone else's, I would think. It was pretty weird figuring it out, I would say. Um, (laughs) About a year and a half ago, I started just feeling sort of dizzy and nauseous and lightheaded and generally pretty crappy all the time. And on top of that, I was just, like, weirdly obsessed with blood. Like, okay, that's odd um so you know a little bit of google magic later me typing in am turning into vampire please advise um i figured out that okay no there there are other people who drink blood etc etc so that's that's fine i'll just i'll just try that for myself approaching donors is a little weird but like people are shockingly nice literally my current donor I got after just like a five minute conversation they noted I was wearing all black and I was like yeah well I drink blood too and they're like wait really and I'm like oh yeah it's a whole thing they're like okay well do you need a donor I'm like yes so I I don't know that's just me rambling about the vampire experience but that's that's what it's been like for me in any case so well, you drink uh, other human blood. Yes, that's it's correct. Not animal. Does any, like, do any vampires drink, like, animal blood? Because, like, sometimes, like, human blood could, like, have, like, bad stuff in it. Right. So, like, so animal you... blood could sometimes be, like, a diet blood. Kind of like a diet coke <laughs> to a diet coke. Yeah, people, do, people do drink animal blood, and it's especially, like, vampires in Europe, where it tends to be a lot easier to just go to a butcher and be like, hey, I want some cow's blood. In the U.S., that's really pretty difficult. Um, But, you know, it depends on where you are. But the key thing is that, like, you always want to have your donors tested for bloodborne diseases because that stuff is Mm -hmm. nasty, and it's not like we're immune to that or anything. So, um, yeah, I'll... I'll only 
drink blood from someone that's donated to, you know, the Red Cross or, or someone like that recently, because they do all the relevant tests. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was very surprised to find out that vampires are actually a real thing. Like at first I thought it was just folklore myths and stuff like that, but why do you think it's it's not well known that there are people like this? Um well, I guess a couple of reasons. I'd say first of all, you know, the number is is pretty small. Um mm-hmm. two Vampire is really just a convenient term. Like, we're really nothing like the folkloric creature. You know, I I personally am not an undead revenant of a sinful soul who awakens from my coffin every night to prey on the blood of the living, you know. I, I, I prey on the blood of the living in my spare time, you know, like a civilized person. But... <laughs> Like, vampire was just a term adopted because, like, that's where people's mind goes when you say that you drink blood. Um, probably the second reason that's not terribly well known is, like, people are skeptical. <laughs> like, even even people who know about this stuff are going to be like, okay, so there are some crazy people who drink blood. There's crazy people who do whatever. Um which, fair, I'm pretty skeptical myself, you know, there's there's a lot of days I'm like, you know, this is probably just all in my head, but, like, that doesn't really help, like, I still am pretty much obsessed with the taste of blood, so, like, that's just the way it is. Yeah, so going back to all the folklore and everything, so, like, everything about, like, eating garlic and all that, that's out of the window. <laughs> so, you, so, like, do you have, like, garlic fries? Because garlic fries are pretty good. You can find them, like, most restaurants oh. nowadays. God, I mean, having to find donors and all that, that's inconvenient. But if I had to not eat garlic, that would... I don't, I don't even know what I would do about that. That would be... That would be a deal-breaker. But yeah, yeah. No, no, none of that stuff is is the case for, you know, like, real-life vampires <laughs> and all of yeah. that. Um, and if you stab anybody in the heart with a wooden stake, I mean, you die. Like, anybody dies. Yeah. I, <laughs> fair to say, do not stab your vampire friends in the heart. Or or anyone else, for that matter. It's, yeah. it's unkind. That's good advice, That's good advice mm-hmm. for everybody. <laughs> So, what do you have to say uh, to these vampire hunters that are out there and they think it's their job to get rid of any vampires? What do you have to say to them? Like, come at me, bro, I guess? (laughs) No, not really. I I wasn't actually aware that there were, like, actual vampire hunters, but... I know there are... Yeah, no, there's a lot of people who claim to be, but I don't know if they actually do that. Well, on the topic of vampire hunters, um, there was like a common rumor that Abraham Lincoln was a vampire hunter, and they even made a movie <laughs> about it. Um, it, it does that it actually has some merit to it. Do you think he was hunting like the folklore kind of vampires, or people like like the loosely based vampires like you? Yeah, my my guess is is he was hunting, you know, your your vampires of fable like i don't i don't see why someone would hunt your you know modern vampire like me we're quite harmless Mm -hmm. yeah but you know i mean now that you've brought this up i'll I'll keep my eye out because heck maybe maybe my days are numbered maybe i'll walk around a corner sometime and just get black bagged by vampire hunters but you know, don't hunt vampires. We're harmless. Okay, so what are a vampire's strengths and weaknesses? <laughs> okay. Um, 
So there are some people in the vampire community who believe that vampires have special abilities. Uh, such people are probably, like, they're kind of the minority and most people don't really take that seriously. Um, you know, such things as super strength, psychic power, all, all of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Myself, I haven't experienced any of that, so I'm and neither has, has anyone I know, so I'm pretty sure that's, you know, fictional nonsense. But, uh, th there are those who believe it, so I figured I'd at least acknowledge it. I do, okay. as I said, find it shockingly easy to get donors, um, just because, I don't know, I just ask and people say yes, so call that a, a glamour or something if you want, but I like to think it's because of my sparkling personality and unlimited personal charisma. Uh, as for weaknesses, uh, not having blood, I guess. I don't know. A lot of us are nocturnal by nature. I don't know if that's, like, part of it or just sort of a coincidence, but I don't know. I myself rarely get up before two or three or three in the afternoon, so I work nights, all that kind of thing. That's pretty common amongst our community. Okay. And this is a question just like for all the young kids out there and stuff. Like, what is the vampiric community's stance on vaping? Uh, on vaping? Yeah. Uh... That, that's a curveball. I have, have never really thought about it. Um, There's a question just asking all of our podcasts. <laughs> it's, it's fine, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. Probably preferable to smoking regular cigarettes, I guess. But I don't smoke, so my knowledge is essentially nil on this topic. All right. All right. Okay. So like, if they well, start making blood flavored vapes, I'll I'll be all over that. All right. So like, along with like the whole fol folklore thing about vampires, uh, so your lifespan it's not longer, it's not infinite, or is it? <laughs> um, I mean, so far so good, but yeah, I don't think so. I think we're pretty much regular people who who need blood to stay healthy. Um, All right. I feel like a okay. lot of the answers I'm giving here are, are a little bit disappointing, which is often the case when you get a, a vampire on a podcast. Um, yeah. I guess I'm oh, saying I'm, okay. <laughs> I'm not, like, ruling out the existence of folkloric vampires, though. I, I do want to say that. Like, I don't necessarily believe in them, but I do want to say if you're a person who, like, believes in ghosts and ghost hunters, haunted houses, all of that, then it is somewhat random to not believe in folkloric vampires as well. Because if you actually go to the folk tales, like, they're basically just ghosts that drink blood. So, I don't know. If I were to haunt a house, mm. I'd probably be basically like a folkloric vampire. Yeah. Do, does, like, your community, do they think that, like, Dracula existed? Or is that just, like, associated with the folklore? Um... Well, as I understand it, there was an actual person named Dra Dracula. Um, yeah. As I also understand it, Bram Stoker, author of Dracula, the audience, took some some creative liberties and sort of, he used Dracula's name that sort of combined him with another figure who existed around the same time who did drink blood. So the historical Dracula probably had no particular vampiric qualities, but there was some other Eastern European nobleman at the same time who might have. But, you know, you know there are plenty of creepy European nobles who indulged in such things. Uh, your Elizabeth Bouchery, for example, bathed in blood, drank the blood of her servants, um, eventually after she killed several hundred people, the other nobles kind of got fed up with her antics and eventually sealed her away in a in a tower with a little slot for her meals and left her to die. 
So, I I think that's about as, like, that's as close to your traditional creepy Dracula style folklore as you can as you can get. Fun fact of the oh, day: God. the inspiration for Dracula, who was Vlad the Impaler, was of House mm-hmm. Dracula of some old Romanian house. So that's mm-hmm. a little little fact for today. Those are pretty much like Thank old you. Romanian fraternities. Yeah, and he had a killer mustache, man. Oh, you see any of pictures, dude? That guy looked like a... He's pretty cool, man. Okay. So, do you think that any modern vampires today are still dangerous? Um... In as far as human beings are dangerous, probably slightly more. I mean... I don't know of any vampires who have actually, like lost control and bitten someone in public or anything, but I know plenty of vampires who have, like, wanted to. I remember the first time after I started getting these symptoms, um, I was having my blood drawn, and I basically just, like, went into fight-or-flight mode looking at the, at the little vials they were drawing, because I really wanted to drink them, and, like, I was trying to, like, okay, no, that's not very socially acceptable. Do not frighten the nurse. Do not bite anyone. Just, you know, stay calm. So, heck, I don't know. Um, there have been serial killers uh, who have drank blood. It's, in fact, a, a whole category in criminology, I believe, vampire murders. Um, so, were some of those people actual, like, sanguinarian it's it's quite possible interesting what's your like there are different like uh variants of blood you know like there's like high blood sugar low blood sugar like a deep red Mm. what do you think is like the best flavor of blood uh yes as far as people go um first of all blood type doesn't like, people can't taste antigens. That's not a thing. But um, yeah. vegetarians, definitely the tastiest in, in my experience. And I'm not alone in this. I feel Kind of like, like grass-fed cattle? Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, we vampires, we're out here. We demand a vegan sacrifice, okay? We're just like, it's really good. good. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm not picky. Any blood is good. But comparing... You know, your your vegetarian health nut to your person with a shitty gamer diet. It's it's night and day, really. Okay. How are uh, vampires related to Bigfoot and extraterrestrials? <laughs> um... To the best of my knowledge, not at all. Uh, but, you know, it's interesting to think. A lot of yeah. vampires I know are believers in, in the paranormal. Probably just as many aren't, but uh, mm-hmm. I, I think we're a little bit more inclined to be credulous than the average person. Okay. Man, I'm shooting down all your questions. Uh, well, look... <laughs> We're we're separating the myth from the fact. Vampire Mythbusters. That's all right. That that should be the title of this. Yeah, episode. that's a good title. <laughs> what's your uh like? What's your viewpoint on cryptids like uh, Wendigo and Skinwalkers and such? I have a a deep and abiding crush on Mothman. <laughs> uh, I I don't know. He's just He's dreamy. His big wings, the misshapen head, the luminous red eyes, like a girl can dream about someone like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As for the rest of the cryptids, uh, I don't know. I'm a big fan of, like, the Beast of Ray Road uh, mm. and just dogman sightings around the world. Those are, I don't know. I Just because they're there are so many of them, and they're all so similar. I feel like maybe there's something there. 
uh, kind of the same way I feel about Mothman, actually. Bigfoot, Loch Ness Monster, I don't know. I feel like they're overexposed. They're kind of... I have nothing yeah. against them. I just feel like they're kind of cryptid divas. Like, I just... Yeah. I don't know. Like, share There's some of the attention. Much... Oh, exactly. Exactly. Share some with your your Mothman, your Dogman, your... I don't know. There's lots of lesser-known cryptids who, who deserve their, their time to yeah. shine. The Snallygaster. Exactly. Why are, Why is no one talking about the Snallygaster? Mm-hmm. Uh, world these days. All right. Um, next question. Um, since, like, they both have, like, a love for bats, like, would you say, like, the vampire community, like, and Batman have a lot in common? That's an interesting question. Because, um, like, Batman does, like, he, 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 his life kind of revolves around bats. And, like, do you guys like bats a lot, too? Yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that we love bats. At, at least I do, but I think a lot of us, you know, bats are, are kind of a, a symbol of, of the community. You know, sometimes, ironically, like, a, a lot of the vampire aff- affectations, like, being goth is not a requirement to be a vampire, right? But, you know, a lot of us sort of use that stuff ironically. But, yeah, it's fair to say that we like bats. Um, Batman, I don't know. Personally, I am neither a billionaire nor a vigilante. But, I, you know, that it kind of narrows one's life choices to not be left a massive mansion and huge boatloads of money by dead parents but uh i don't know i I like to think i would probably live my life similar to batman would the circumstances permit how many other vampires do you remain in contact with Um, like on a regular basis i probably only talk to five or ten but i'm aware of and in vague contact with a, about a hundred, I would say. Interesting. Cool. How many vampires do you think there are alive in our society today? Hmm. Yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, it is... It's hard to say. Um, I would guess tens of thousands. Interesting. Yeah. Is there like an area Dude. where you think most of them are concentrated? Like, well, I'm only I'm only really aware of vampires in the United States and Europe, just because of you know that that's who who I'm basically associated with. But I don't see any reason why there shouldn't, of course, be vampires. Well, is there like a like a city or state in like the United States that like has like the most vampires? Kind of like like the South <laughs> has like the most like rednecks. That, that's a, a good point, um, and it's funny you should ask that. There's actually a site, um, it's called theblackbooks.com, that, like, tracks vampires in the United States. Um, so anyone who's interested can actually kind of just go and look at a map of the U.S. and, and the vampires therein. Um, I would say there seems to be a shocking number of vampires in the Midwest, of all places actually um and i know that's not what you'd think you'd think vampires like sort of metrosexual elites so like your your portland your seattle your san francisco yeah. but no i for the most part it seems like vampires are are denizens of the cornfields okay. i i personally live in california <laughs> Cool. Um, so, is it easy to spot a vampire, or do they usually uh, try to live their lives normally and just kind of blend in with everyone else? We ge- we generally blend in. Um, I yeah, I, I can't think of a, a a good way to just spot a vampire that's foolproof. Um, that said, mm-hmm. there are a lot of people in the community, I don't know, I'm calling me a little skeptical of this, who who believe that 
one vampire will always be able to sort of pick up on the presence of another. Again, color me skeptical, but a lot of people do say that, so thought I'd share it. Okay. Um, what is, like, a vampire's favorite music? <laughs> what do most vampires listen to? Uh, you know, it, it's it's really, it's quite diverse. Um, A lot of vampires I know are, are basically pretty goth, which, like, I I feel like if you're already a vampire, why not become goth, too? Because you'll, you'll basically have unlimited cred. Like, you can make all the other goths go scurrying just by saying, you know, I actually drink human blood every month. It's like, okay, whatever. Yeah, clearly, you've got this locked down. So that's a roundabout way of saying I know a lot of vampires into goth rock. I'm not really, but you know, it, it, it's very diverse, though. Okay, it's interesting to think that uh, anybody living in your community could secretly be a vampire and you don't know it. Yeah, that's basically true. So I'm, I know why myself um, a lot of times if I haven't fed and I'm just having a conversation with someone, I'm probably fantasizing about noshing on their arteries. So, you know, they're not going to do anything, but they do probably want to tear your heart out. Just saying. Sleep well at night, kids. <laughs> All right, well, um, any more questions for you guys, or do you have any questions for us? Um, not so much. Um, I do want to say, so I've covered one side of it, and that's the side I'm familiar with, and that's, you know, your vampires who drink blood. However, there's also a contingent in the community that's just as large that believes that um, they require psychic energy to live and uh, drain that surreptitiously from other people who are around them. So that's mm -hmm. that's an entire other thing, which honestly I'm not terribly qualified to get into. But you know, just just know that that's out there, and you know, if you're just walking around in public, there could be someone feeding off of you psychically just right now. That's a crazy thought. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why we have we have three rules of paranormal that we created, and rule number three is to have um, a good uh, psychic defense system to protect oh, yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, it's it's very important. One of the the rules of the the Discord where um, Carson found me is that you know. No feeding on people psychically without their permission, because that's mm -hmm. rude. I, I don't know. I, I approach this topic with some levity. I don't know. I'd color myself a little skeptical of of vamps too, but there are a lot of them, and they do mm -hmm. mostly appear to be extraordinarily nice people, and they do also seem to know things that they have no way of knowing, which is somewhat bizarre so yeah uh, don't know about the vamp part but they're definitely psychic mm -hmm. do you think there are any like figureheads in the vampiric community or is it just like isolated people that are just meeting online or are there like leaders you know um i know like how like tom cruise is like a leader of scientology Right, I, I would say, like, for every person who's a quote-unquote leader in the vampire community, there are, are, you know, 20 people who hate everything they stand for. The va the vampire community is, is very contentious, in point of fact. Um, I, I try and stick to the corners of the internet where basically everyone is, is nice and we're just posting memes all day. Um... But I, I feel like in basically every community I've been in where there are actually serious discussions going on about, like, what vampirism is, what it means, all that kind of thing, 
People are mean. I think it's because they're hungry. But, or maybe it's just because every online community is horrible. But it it seems like vampires, even by those standards, are not terribly well behaved. Hmm. So, we're kind of a collective of grumpy anarchists, I guess. No. No effective leaders to speak of. All right. Do you know of any, like, have you heard any stories about vampires trying to start, like, a coven? <laughs> uh, yeah, I have, and plenty of vampires have started covens, uh, to the best of my knowledge. I myself am, like, houses. Um, <laughs> as far as I know, said covens and or houses don't really do anything, but maybe that's just what they want me to think. I don't know. I haven't gotten any invitations. All right. All right. Um, any more questions? I don't have any more. I think we're good. Yeah, not from me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I'd like to thank you so much, Kara, for coming on the show. Of course, and, anytime. Uh, yeah, if there there's anything you need from me just let me know and yeah yeah well, a few liters of blood maybe uh we'll, we'll table uh, that for now well <laughs> i'll i'll let you i'll let you guys discuss you can think about it. um but no seriously thanks for having me on this was fun thanks for being was, very uh, open <laughs> yeah i feel like most of us are so all right all right well, that's it. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.